Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi, and you can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Calvert alongside Father Joe Grimaldi, and welcome to the Father Joe Podcast. The Father Joe Podcast, proudly supported by our good friends at Hoot McInerney, Starlink and 12 Mile Road and Telegraph in Southfield, the home of the Father Joe Grimaldi Star Treatment, serving southeastern lower Michigan customers for 50 years. That's three generations of McInerney's following founder Hoot McInerney's mission to provide the customer with the best service possible, and that's why so many of Star's customers are on their second, third, and fourth Starlink and luxury vehicle like me. I'm on Star Lincoln MKC number four. Summer savings spectacular going on right now. And the only thing hotter than these temperatures are the savings. Check out the summer savings on the stunning 2020 Lincoln Aviator, the all-new Lincoln Nautilus, the Lincoln MKC, and the must-have Lincoln Navigator. Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln 12 Mile Road and Telegraph in Southfield. They treasure your time and your business. Stop on by and say hi. Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln 12 Mile Road and Telegraph in Southfield, home of the Star Treatment. How we feeling today? How we feeling? Couldn't be better. Another day, another A. Uh, of course. Yeah. All right. Well, you look good. <laughs> you know, like in the weather, it was too hot for the body's know. falling apart, uh, but I know, feel well, good. I know how that works. <laughs> I know how that. Oh God, there it goes. Oh no. You know, the weather has been so beautiful the last couple of days. If only you could be like this forever, but well, the no last couple luck. of days. But prior to that, that <laughs> yeah, was well, oppressive heat. Let's forget it. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's enjoy it while we have it. I like those places that have like Hawaii and Florida. That have those nice little afternoon showers. Isn't that nice? It's perfect for a nap. You know, I don't know how I came upon this, but I did last night, and it was from the Catholic News Agency. That's where I found it. One of my favorite movies growing up, and it still is today, is the movie Boys Town with Spencer Tracy. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it just from beginning to end, I just, I really, I really liked the movie. He took these orphans and he, he gave them a place to stay. Well, of course, there's much more to it than that. But basically, Father Edward Flanagan was... Do you know what kind of a priest he was? Well, a, a diocesan priest. He was a diocesan priest. He, no? uh, you know, what, what you said before was not wrong by any means. In the beginning, it was a simple little act of charity. Take a few people together and make a home for them make sure that they get what they need and if they're sick they get help and so on call people are going to be helped to us and then as time goes on more and more join the community and so he has to deal with the growth of the of the whole institution with cable television now and on demand and all that i doubt very much you'd have a difficult time finding the movie and maybe sometime this Later on this summer, maybe whenever you get a chance, it's an it's really it's a good movie. It's a very very good movie. Born in Ireland, I was not aware of that he immigrated here from the county Roscommon. He immigrated to the United States in 1904. Was ordained a priest in 1912. He was assigned to what was then the diocese of Omaha. Omaha. Yeah, yeah. After working with homeless men in Omaha. He founded a boarding house for all boys, regardless of race or religion. He soon moved his work to Overlook Farm on the outskirts of Omaha, where he cared for hundreds. That became known as the Village of Boys Town. So it is now a institution that's worldwide. Correct. I don't know how they're all affiliated. In some cases, I think it's just a matter of trying to imitate what he did and then they start their own situation they may be affiliated if they call themselves boys town it says here that the cause for canonization that's where i was going with this okay the cause is that is that an important word cause it's synonymous with the word case okay when you're dealing with canonization we call it the cause for canonization because it's really it comes down to When you're dealing with the canonization of an individual, it's almost like having to prove a case in court. Mm -hmm. And since it's not a civil case, it's a religious case, well, we call it a cause. So at some point, someone, somebody, some group of people 
decided, looking back on Father Flanagan, his life, what he did, his mission, his direction, and all of the great deeds that he performed, including, apparently, what I suspect will be two miracles? I don't think there's anything yet. They've concluded the diocesan part of the case. Okay. Well, let's go there for a second. How is it that you're involved with canon law? I did my studies in canon law. Okay. So I was in the tribunal in Honolulu, and whoever's the head of the tribunal in any city, when something of this nature occurs, it goes to the head of the tribunal. So this is why I was involved with Father Damien and Mother Marianne, because I was head of the tribunal in Honolulu. On the other hand, when I was working in California, they needed someone who had my credentials because there was a woman, her name is Cora Evans, uh-huh. and Cora was born and raised in Salt Lake City, but she died in California. And so the cause became proper to California. So causes is an important word here. Yeah, and so what happened was that they asked me to be the postulator for that canonization. And so I've been working on that. But to get back to Father Flanagan... Right, so this is in the very early stages for Father Flanagan. Early in the sense, not time-wise, it may take years and years and years. That's what I mean, yeah. There are two phases. The first phase occurs in the diocese where the person has died. And so it's going to be in the Diocese of Omaha, Nebraska. And once they reach the end of phase one, they conclude it, if you want, and they've decided that he was truly a holy man. They've decided that everything that they've studied and read about him seems to point to that fact. So now it's time, let's move it to Rome. So they get all of the documentation that they have, and they proceed to send it to Rome, and that's where you have the congregation for the canonization of saints. And now it's in their hands. I think it's already been sent to Rome. It has, as uh, of yesterday. The congregation is under the direction of uh, Monsignor Bichu. In any case, it's in their hands to study it, to get whatever more information they need on it. If you were in Omaha, would you be possibly a part of this process? Would you be part of the Omaha If I was in the tribunal, yes. If you were in the tribunal. Okay, so the positio, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the case Uh as it exists in the first phase is over with. The positio argues that Flanagan demonstrated heroic virtue, yes. is what so, it says here. Positio is the Latin way of saying that what we see today, after all of the work we've done, is that he is truly a holy man. Father Flanagan's work inspired 80 other boys' towns around the world. The original boys' town now serves about 80,000 kids and families each year. After World War II, the priest cared for orphans and displaced children in Japan, Germany, and Austria at the request of our president, Harry Truman. So God said, Father Flanagan, I got a job for you. Yeah, and and I think in other countries, they've imitated what he's done. I know, for example, if you go to Rome, there's the Boys Town of Italy, which is a uh, very elaborate democratic establishment of young people And it takes up a good part of the city of Rome in the outskirts Uh where these young people live, conduct their lives in the best way they can. And they're even given a certain amount of salary for any of the duties that they have to carry out. They even have their own system of justice. So if somebody is caught doing something wrong, he appears before his peers or her peers. Yeah. They decide the punishment. They decide the punishment. Hmm. So it's a a very elaborate democratic institution that they have. It's an imitation of Father Flanagan. I want to add one more thing. Please do, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I always found fascinating, and you referred to it earlier, is the movie. And the reason I say that, the movie put Father Flanagan on the map. It did. Let me say this. (laughs) 
And now, and I believe this is true, it has, because of that movie, it has become one of the largest destinations for philanthropy. Matter of fact, they have more money than they know what to do with. Wow, okay? is that right? Um, so they have to find different ways of dispersing it. Only because of that movie, uh, you mentioned very interestingly that it is such an appealing type of movie yeah. that it touched the hearts of so many people. Oh, yeah. And that the fundraising became a joy, not a job, okay, that people had to go through to collect money to continue the work of Father Flanagan. As they say, it attracted so many philanthropists that they have the wonderful experience <laughs> yeah. of not knowing what to do with saying, a lot of the saying, money. They no have. more. No more we're <laughs> No, they don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works, isn't it? It's a fascinating thing. I'm reading the timeline on this now. Flanagan's cause was opened in the Archdiocese in 2012, and the phase was concluded in 2015. In January 2017, the then perfect of the congregation. The prefect, yeah. Okay. Cardinal Angelo Amato, he signed a decree affirming the validity of the dias diocesan phase. So that means we're just getting started. It's not as automatic as we think it is. In some cases, canonizations occur in a heartbeat. You take, for example, the canonization of Mother Teresa. Right. Relatively speaking, that took place in no time, okay? Yeah. Usually, canonizations sometimes can go as long as hundreds of years. Right. So it's not something that you expect just because the first phase is over with. Now it's in Rome, and now what are they going to do? There are fast trackers out there. Well, yes, because that, a lot of it depends on popularity. I was, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, well, I had a feeling that popularity... They have to be well-known. Yeah. Well, Pope John Paul II. Canonized. If you remember... It is St. John Paul now, yes, right? But if you remember... It is St. John Paul. Oh, it is. So yeah. there's a, no question. But if you remember when he was being waked, if you want, or that type of thing, right after he died. Okay. He was right in the rotunda in Rome. Yes. And people were shouting, Santo Subito, Santo Subito, which if you translate it means, make him a saint now. Oh. Make him a saint now. And it became like a um, a mantra. People were repeating, repeating, repeating. Obviously, Rome had to take that into consideration in whatever they did with him. And, of course, once they started the cause, things happened, and before you know it, he's canonized. John the Twenty Third. similarly, I mean, he died in our lifetime. He lived in our lifetime. Yes. And so to think that he, too, has become a saint. Paul the Sixth, another one who has become a saint. Yeah. So these are people, or popes, if you want. But... Mother Teresa, who was well known not only in the United States, around but the around world. the world, around the world, yeah. she was uh, from India to Texas to England. It doesn't. And so it doesn't on. matter if you look at anybody's wall of fame, no matter what area of life they're in, politics, sports, whatever. There ultimately is that photo of that person posing with or being near Mother Teresa. Right, right. You know, that's the one that people always want on the wall. She's the famous Albanian. Yes. It's amazing. We're talking about Father Flanagan, which leads us to this various, well, which leads us to this discussion about sainthood and the process that you're a part of. The miracles. Why is it that we assign two miracles to this process? Well, <laughs> As a proof, if you want, of the sanctity of the individual, one miracle is usually done before you declare someone blessed, like Blessed Solanus. Then the second miracle moves him up to sainthood. I, oh. I have a problem, not a problem. Wait a minute, me. stop the presses for a second. So, Blessed Solanus Casey is in need of one more miracle before we can assign saint? Probably. Really? Yeah. I thought you told me, basically, that Blessed is a saint. Ah, of course. Where else do you think they are? 
All right, if they're called blessed, Uh and if they can be, for example, we brought up the idea of naming a church. Yes. They have to be a saint. Uh You can use blessed Solanus these days. That's true, yeah. So the thing is this, that there's very little difference between sainthood and blessedness. I mean, once they've arrived at being blessed, you are pretty well assured that they are in the heavenly kingdom, if you want. Uh I don't see much of a difference. John Paul II beatified hundreds of people. And he did it because he felt that everybody needs someone that they can look up to. So a teenager needs a teenage saint. A a married couple needs a married couple who are saints. Sure. Single people need single saints. Religious people need a religious saint. So he just would beatify lots of them. Have they ever become saints? I don't know, not many of them. So because he did so many of them that we don't know how many are actually going to be canonized. They are blessed. They have arrived at that point. Uh huh. But the canonization is the next step. Do you think that it means, is it as impactful now as it was, say, 50 years ago? And as much awe of someone being canonized a saint as they were in 1965. My experience is yes, Uh and I'll tell you why. Particularly since we live in the greater Detroit area, where Solanus Casey is someone that almost everybody, Catholic or non-Catholic, would know who it is. Uh In any case, I get this so often you wouldn't believe. What's wrong? Why isn't Solanus Casey a saint? He was made a blessed, but he is not a saint. When is that going to happen? I said, listen, I don't know when it's going to happen. I mean, I'm not involved in the Roman uh, situation. But by the same token, I wouldn't worry about it. You could pray to Solanus Casey as much as you want, because he's up there. If he's arrived at beatification, which is being blessed, I wouldn't worry about whether or not he has the title saint in front of him. Given his humility, I don't think he cares either. No, I'm sure he doesn't. (laughs) You know, but it's kind of interesting how some of the people are just, how could this not happen? What's wrong? (laughs) Because they see what's happened to John Paul II, even Paul VI, Uh and so on and so forth. People say, well... What's wrong with Solanus? Yeah, I know. Well, well that's because, of, like you said, it's, yeah. a, it's, all about, think, it's all about the geography. And I'm sure it's the same situation in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, but you see, with, uh, one of the things that you mentioned yourself, in Omaha, the thing that really brought Father Flanagan to the fore, if you want, was the movie. Yeah. I'll tell you, without the movie, he would not be well known. Two things on that real quickly, and I'm just speculating. Number one, wonder who it was that decided to do that movie. Well, if I'm not mistaken, and again, I'd have to do research because I Yeah, I, I, I didn't, lo- I didn't look that part up, but I will now. Yeah, but if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the people who were running development to take care of things in Boys Town. Let's get they this needed, Spencer Tracy. Get him on the phone, boys. Yeah, well, we needed something. Yeah. You see what I mean? whoever thought of it was a genius because it certainly did what it was supposed to do. It certainly did, and it was a great movie, and I highly recommend, yeah. again, yeah. if you haven't seen the movie Boys Town, it's easy enough. I mean, it's, oh, sure. it's probably 90 minutes. It would indeed be then St. Father Flanagan? No, they, they don't use titles. It's whatever name is common. Now, if his first name is Edward, it would say St. Edward. Otherwise, St. Edward Flanagan, they would have the whole thing. They're not going to worry about titles, well, like John Paul II yeah. is St. John Paul. Well, it's so Blessed no. Solanus Casey, and it'll be St. Solanus yeah. Casey. So, that's so I'm going to go with St. Edward Flanagan, but yeah. prior to that, it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll be Blessed Edward Flanagan. Okay, enough about that. At least we know it's in the cause, the case stage moving, right now, moving. and it's moving on to the Vatican. You're right. So good luck, Father. Take care of us down here, will you? Watch over us. Yeah, watch over (laughs) us, if you will. Well, peace be with you, Father Grimaldi. And with your spirit. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You can go. The podcast is ended. How do you like that? Well, is it or what? (laughs) Yeah, it is. That's it for right now. I'm Ken Calvert on the Father Joe Podcast. We'll see you next time. I look forward to it. Thank you. 
This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. If you'd like, you can email us. It's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply search Father Joe Grimaldi. And thanks for listening, everyone.